Good day, everyone. Another day with another episode of ASEAN News, and here are today's news. At least 13 tourists found dead in central Vietnam. The television VTV reported at least 13 tourists were found dead and four remained missing after a boat capsized in Vietnam's central coast of Hoi An. Nguyen Sin, as part of the chief of Chua Dai Ward in Hoi An City, told Reuters that they were searching for the missing. The accident happened when the boat was carrying 36 tourists, including two children and three sailors, from Chu Lao Cham Island to Hoi An. Vietnam is seeing an increase in tourism activities after the country recently lifted most of its coronavirus curbs. Protesters in Bangkok rally against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A group of protesters, including Ukrainian and foreigners, demonstrated against the war in front of Russia's embassy in Bangkok. Less than four days after it started, the invasion has triggered a Western political, strategic, economic and corporate response unprecedented in its extent and coordination. A UN human rights monitoring team has confirmed 376 civilian casualties in Ukraine, including 94 deaths. It said the fighting had triggered severe humanitarian consequences and that casualties could be considerably higher. We cannot sit tight. This is unacceptable. So we just went here to protest against the war too, of course to show that the whole world, not just Ukrainian people. We all want Russia to stop this aggression, to throw their forces back into Russia and stop killing Ukrainian people. Extreme rain submerges Australian towns. Thousands of people have been ordered to leave their homes after heavy rains smashed Australian East Coast, submerging towns and stranding residents on rooftops with authorities' warning of further life-threatening floods. Emergency services said the death toll rose to eight after a man was swept away trying to cross a flooded road. The Brisbane River in Australia, third largest city, neared its expected peak early in the day with around 15,000 homes there impacted by raising waters. In addition, in New South Wales, evacuation orders were issued for several towns, including Lismore, about 700 km north of Sydney. Australia's East Coast summer has been dominated by the La Nina climate pattern, which is typically associated with greater rainfall. Chinese melee reports 234 new COVID-19 cases, including 87 locally transmitted. Chinese mainland reported 234 new COVID-19 cases, comprising 147 imported and 87 locally transmitted. Actually, the imported cases are 53 were detected in Guangdong, 45 in Shanghai, 20 in Beijing, and 11 in Guangxi four each in Fujian and Shandong, three each in Heilongjiang and Sichuan, two in Henan, and one each in Jiangsu and Yunnan. Thirteen of the imported cases were recategorized as an active ones from asymptomatic cases. Therefore, the locally transmitted cases, 40, were reported in Guangdong, 11 each in Inner Mongolia and Guangxi, nine in Tianjin, five in Hubei, for each in Sangshi and Heilongjiang, two in Yunnan and one in Liaoning. Five new suspected cases, all imported, were registered in Shanghai. No new deaths were reported on the day. There were six suspected cases and no deaths were reported among the imported infections. 
by the end of Sunday, the mainland had reported 109,326 confirmed COVID-19 cases. Of the total, 101,936 had been discharged from hospital following recovery and 4,633 had died as a result of the virus. Currently, 2,754 confirmed cases remain in hospital for treatment, with 21 in severe conditions. There were six suspected COVID-19 cases in the mainland. 19 asymptomatic cases, comprising 16 imported and three local ones, were released from medical observation on the day. There were 1,006 asymptomatic cases under medical observation by Sunday, of whom 765 were imported. The total 18,236 COVID-19 patients in Hong Kong, 79 in Macau, and 13,742 in Taiwan had been discharged from hospital after recovery. South Korea's president expresses concern over potential new Cold War. <laughs> South Korea President Moon Jae-in attended a ceremony marking Independence Movement Day and expressed concerns over a new Cold War amid escalation tensions following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Moon said during his speech that state-centered nationalism, which seeks to gain hegemony by force, is also raising its head again. Concerns over a new Cold War are on the rise as well. Moon also urged Japan to face history and empathize with the wounds of the people of neighboring countries. Japan and South Korea share a bitter history that includes Japan's 1910 to 45 colonization of the peninsula and the issue of comfort to women, a Japanese euphemism for mostly Korean women forced to work in its wartime brothels. This year commemorates 103rd year of the declaration of the nation's independence from Japanese colonization on March. China intensifies effort to rescue rare disease patients. China has been endeavoring to improve the prevention diagnosis and treatments for rare disease patients and bring down the drug price to alleviate burdens of the patients and their families. Marks the 15th Rare Disease Day, which is observed globally to raise awareness about such diseases. In recent years, China intensified efforts to rescue about 20 million patients with rare diseases in the country. And every year, more than 200,000 people in China are diagnosed with such diseases. To improve the diagnosis and treatment of rare diseases, the country is building more than 500 collaborative research works on rare diseases among the national key labs and translational medicine centers. Currently in China, diagnosis period for more rare diseases has been shortened from an average of four years to four weeks. To bring down the sky-high medical cost of the rare diseases patients, the National Medical Products Administration continues its effort to speed up drug approvals and green light more medicines, while the National Healthcare Administration has carried out drug pricing negotiations and included more drugs in the healthcare insurance. Currently, more than 40 out of the total of over 50 rare diseases medicine available at the domestic market are eligible for reimbursement, remarkably reducing the medical expenses for patients. Zhang Shuyang said, in order to fundamentally reduce medical cost, we need to have domestically developed pharmaceutical products. As rare diseases are mostly congenital and hereditary, the National Health Commission has urged people to take necessary examinations before and during pregnancy, as well as the newborn screening, which can effectively prevent rare diseases. Japan joins allies on anti-Russian SWIFT measures. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said Japan is working closely with G7 nations to ensure effective economic sanctions against Russia and its central bank following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In addition to excluding certain Russian banks from SWIFT, we have received the request from Western countries to participate in the measure, so Japan has also announced its participation in these measures. 
Japan Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi said at the meeting, Tokyo is also considering imposing sanctions against some individuals in Belarus, a key staging area for the Russian invasion. Russia's political and economic isolation deepened, and as it forces met stiff resistance in Ukraine's capital and other cities in the biggest assault on a European state since World War II. Central Bank sets new rules for China. China issued new rules for the country and two largest mobile payment platforms as the government tightens oversight on the country's fintech sector. China is one of the most advanced countries when it comes to mobile payments. As the businesses grows, regulators have tightened restrictions on the fintech sector to check risks and ensure financial safety. The new payment rules issued by the People's Bank of China for Alipay and WeChat, the aiming to distinguish between business and personal transactions in an effort to better regulate and prevent financial crimes. The notice emphasizes the collection code is divided into personal and business collection codes and anyone using a payment platform in a way that looks a lot like a business should use a merchant barcode rather than an individual one to receive payments. Another new regulation is the restriction of the personal static collection barcode, which is prohibited in principle for remote non-face-to-face -face collections for most cases. That an individual merchant might report shows the value of transaction made through QR codes both merchant and personal hit 10.8 trillion yuan or 1.7 trillion US dollars in the second quarter last year. Meanwhile, nearly 100 million small and micro business owners in China use individual QR codes on Alipay and WeChat Pay to handle payments, and some have taken advantage of the lax oversight. Some small vendors and owners of mom and pop stores seem to be worried about the lack of information on the new rules. According to the latest announcement, users occasionally using QR codes to collect small sum payments will not be subjected to business taxes or tighted rules, but will be offered the option of upgrading to a business one. And that's the whole news for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you as well, Julius Posu for the wardrobe. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice weekend.